This patient's had a history of blunt trauma with resultant cataract and dilated atonic pupil that was measured to be between 6 to 7 millimeters preoperatively. She was also very motivated to try to be spectacle-free postoperatively and was keen on the multifocal lens, which we'll discuss shortly. Our goal here was first to remove the cataract, uh, examining for any potential zonular weakness with a history of trauma, and her zonules appear to be fairly stable after the capsorexis was performed uneventfully. Uh, Fecal emulsification and IA of cortex is performed uneventfully, and we'll proceed in this case to place a capsule tension ring here uh, just for security purposes and to ensure adequate centration, especially since we're considering the use of a multifocal lens. She'll know she also had uh, around two diopters of width the rule cylinder. As you can see, we've marked the cornea on the steep axis of the intended placement of this uh, multifocal toric lens. As you see here with this pupil independent uh, single piece acrylic multifocal lens. In this case, uh, this lens has two and a quarter diopters of cylinder correction on the IOL along with this multifocal design. The IOL is positioned uh, into the correct alignment. I rotated into the position here to uh, sit parallel to those marks and the viscoelastic is removed from behind the lens to ensure and prevent uh, postoperative rotation. At this point we're going to uh, ensure the IOL is centered well after we re-inject uh, some myocol in this case and also some viscoelastic to uh, stabilize the anterior chamber for the pupil repair component of the procedure. We'll position the lens here using the uh, first Purkinje image as we see here to center it over the bullseye of the multifocal lens as you see and of course uh, in this eye we have it placed slightly nasal to uh, sit uh, in uh, position with the patient's visual axis. We will then examine the iris as you can see here the iris is still intact uh, fairly spongy and of course can be stretched into position here and we'll start uh, at the, in a nasal paracentesis with a 10-0 proline suture on a long CIF4 needle. Uh, this is the uh, pupillary cerclage technique that we're going to use uh, the use of a micro grasper you see in our in this case in our left hand helps us to mobilize the iris into position to the needle so the needle actually doesn't do a lot of the work actually it's the uh, forceps hand bringing the iris to the needle that helps pass the uh, needle through the uh, peripheral iris we then will then um, place the needle through an, an adjacent paracentesis with the use of a docking needle to prevent any entrapment of corneal fibers notice that the uh, bites are made approximately half millimeter from the pupil edge and approximately a millimeter apart or so. This will help to help round out the uh, pupil as much as possible. And again, you can see how we switched hands here in this case. Our left hand's holding the needle while the right hand's holding the micrograsper. Uh, the needle is docked to a 27 gauge um, cannula and then is uh, removed through a paracentesis. Notice how we place these paracentesis here uh, one third uh, of the way around the limbus uh, to allow uh, this, the needle to be passed along one third of the iris. We will then uh, pass both needle ends again back into the eye through their pers respective paracentesis, back through into the main incision. And uh, this allows us basically to have the sutures out through the main incision. As you see, we've come nasally all the way around temporally using a double-armed, as we said, tenorproline suture. We'll then tie the suture with a pair of micro tires. The micro tire here is being used to essentially pass the suture uh, knot into the eye. Uh, this is a modified mechanical, as you see here. We're basically uh, drawing the knot into the eye here. Uh, to create a pupil size of adequate uh, size and shape. Uh, our goal here is basically to match this patient's fellow eye, which is approximately uh, just between 3 to 3.5 millimeters. This is the usual size. We will then basically lock the knot uh, with a backhander throw here. And again, rather than the knot uh, coming or the suture coming out to the uh, incision, we're passing the knot into the eye here with the aid of a micro grasper. This is certainly a helpful technique as an alternative to the seat sliding knot or the complete intraocular tying and we feel this is a very straightforward technique to use. We will then basically spread the iris around the pupil margin to avoid any bunching up of the iris in one particular spot and this here we see the multifocal lens well centered with a well centered uh, pupillary cerclage that has closed the iris now to adequate size.